United States, the earliest kindergartens were private. The classes were often conducted in the teacher's home. Kindergarten teachers, many of whom were women, usually found students through word of mouth or via discreet newspaper advertisements, developing a clientele who could pay for their children's learning. Morning. I am Margaret Welchball, and this is my pioneer in early childhood presentation on Susan Elizabeth Blow. I realize we learned about Susan Blow in class, but I will try to bring a little something different to this presentation. Today, if you were to walk the streets of St. Louis, Missouri, you might run across a star that bears Susan Elizabeth Blow's name on the St. Louis Walk of Fame. The star location is at 6374 Thelmark. The citation below the star reads, the average child, poor child in 1860 in St. Louis completed three years of school before being forced to work at the age of 10. Susan Elizabeth Blow addressed the problem by offering education to children earlier. Applying Frederick Forbeau's theories, she opened the first United States successful public kindergarten in St. Louis Dupre's school in 1873. Blow taught children in the morning and teachers in the afternoon. By 1883, every St. Louis public school had a kindergarten, making the city a model for the nation, devoting her life to early education. Susan Blow was instrumental in establishing kindergartens throughout America. Elizabeth Blow was born June 7, 1843 in St. Louis to a very wealthy family. From an early age, the parents instilled a great love of education. Her father, Henry Taylor Blow, was a wealthy businessman who profited in the lead industry and later became a famous politician. Now, we also learned in class that she lived on the Mississippi Riverfront until she was six. There was a great fire that burned the riverfront, and that did include Susan's home. And there was a cholera epidemic that swept through the city, and Henry Blow moved his family to a French settlement about five miles downriver from St. Louis. As an avid learner and the lover of reading, Susan attended a variety of schools open to girls at the time, a French school, various local schools, and a finishing school in New York. Susan received the best education available. Her education in New York was cut short by the Civil War. In 1861, the school shut down and Susan returned to Missouri. During the Civil War, Susan combed through her father's extensive library and even taught herself Portuguese purely for the purpose of being able to serve as her father's secretary once he was appointed to the ambassadorship in Brazil. Four years after the Civil War, Henry Blow was appointed ambassadorship to Brazil. Susan went with her father and worked as his secretary for 15 months. It was on a family trip to Europe that Susan first became acquainted with the methods of Frederick Forbel, who believed that education should began early on when a child's intelligence aptitude for learning could be stimulated through play. Observing the success of the child-friendly classrooms known as kindergartens there were, that were opening in Germany and Europe, Susan noticed that the young children learned important language, math, and science skills by playing with objects such as balls, blocks, and she decided that children in America should have this kind of instruction as well. Upon the return of the family to St. Louis, her father offered to establish a kindergarten 
for Susan to teach in, but as a private school. But Susan declined feeling that the classroom needed to be available to all children in the public school system. Susan studied and learned everything she could about teaching kindergarten. She talked with educators about creating a kindergarten program in America. Susan's father, Henry Blow, approached the St. Louis superintendent of schools, Dr. William Torrey Harris, with the idea to open an experimental kindergarten in St. Louis. Dr. Harris gave Susan his full support, believing it would be a place where the neglected children of St. Louis could receive an introduction to education that they may otherwise never get, as well as keeping them from wandering the streets of the city. Susan offered to direct the school if Dr. Harris would provide a room and a paid teacher. After much learning and preparation on August 26, 1873, the education in America was changed for the better when Susan Blow started class on her first day of teaching. The classroom would open in room four of the Press School in a suburb of St. Louis and she would teach the classes along with an assistant named Mary A. Timberlake. The classroom was warm with colors and the spirit of play that made the students excited about attending the first kindergarten opening in the United States. It had low tables and short benches just right for small children. The rooms contained many plants, books, and toys for children to use during work and play. The students learned about colors, shapes, and fractions by using various blocks, balls, and building toys that the children could freely explore and play with, known as Bell's gifts. Activities were also a large part of the Bell style of teaching to include singing, dancing, and active group work such as gardening. They also learned about keeping themselves clean, eating well, and getting regular exercise. Susan encouraged free play, regarding it as the highest exploration of human development in childhood. She instructed teachers to encourage self-expression and bring out the child's inborn creativity. Later, Dr. Harris came to believe that the wealthy children also needed kindergarten because they might be neglected and left with servants where little learning would occur. The program was so successful that each of the city schools came to start its own kindergarten and by and the original pupils grew to nearly 9,000 in school throughout the city by 1884. In 1875, the school board attempted to end the kindergarten program in a cost-cutting measure. 1,500 people signed a petition that successfully urged the city not to close the kindergartens. By 1879, there were 53 kindergarten rooms in the St. Louis school system. Throughout the years and increased success and recognition, Susan never accepted payment for her work and continued to donate her own money towards the purchase of supplies for the students. Susan was forced to retire from teaching in 1884 after being diagnosed with Graves' disease. Susan remained in the St. Louis area for several years before moving east. In New York and in Boston, she wrote books, including five, focused on Fabel's theories and taught about the kindergarten movement. She helped found the International Kindergarten Union and was granted a three-year appointment to the Teachers College of Columbia University, as well as... She lectured all over the country on the benefits of early childhood education just and stopped just before her death in 1916. Susan wrote several books. Susan died in 1916 in New York City and was buried in Belafonte Cemetery in St. Louis. Susan never married. Susan Blow was dedicated to the education of young children. Today, it is taken for granted that elementary school starts with kindergarten. By the time of her death in 1916, more than 400 cities had kindergartens in the public school system. Although the idea of kindergarten was first introduced in the United States in the late 1840s, it was through Susan's passionate work that kindergarten concept became widely accepted. Clearly, Susan was a woman with a mission 
that she accomplished by drawing upon her personal wealth and her remarkable intelligence. A somewhat less benign deal was on offer in the 1990 film Kindergarten Pop, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and Penelope Ann Miller. You know, Kindergarten is like the ocean. You don't want to turn your back on it. Yeah, okay. Don't worry. Everything is under control. All kidding aside, these days there is a growing emphasis on free kindergarten, which currently serves one in one million four-year-olds. Even so, a recent report from the Department of Education shows that with roughly six in ten four-year-olds still not enrolled in public pre-K, early nurturing is very much a work in progress.